Watergate scandal, construction of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System begins, and Camp Verde, which would become the Republic of Cebu, gains independence after 500 years of Portuguese rule. The year is 1975, and this year was the 50th anniversary of MG. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that digs different cars, history, specs, design. We post between four and five episodes a week with engine episodes on Wednesday. If that sounds of interest to you, a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. 1975 MG model lineup, but before getting into all of that, a little bit of background on MG. Guy by the name of Cecile Kimber joins Morris Grudges, which is what MG stands for, in 1921, would become general manager one year later in 1922. He would tune versions of Morris cars to boost sales. The first MG cars were based on Morris Oxford cars. And as MG increased in popularity, the company would outgrow its original facility. They would move to Abington, where they would build cars for the next 50 years. MG has been under different ownership during its lifetime. From 1921 through 1930, Morris Garages Limited from 1930 through 1952, MG Car Company, 1952 through 1967, British Motor Corporation, 1967 through 1968, British Motor Holdings, 1968 through 1990, British Leyland, 1990 through 1992, Austin Rover, 1992 through 2000, Rover Group, 2000 to 2006, MG Rover Group. 2006 to present day, Nanjing Auto Group, which is in China. 1975, MG model lineup. You had the Midget, then you had the MGB, and the MGB GT. MG would offer the Midget from 1961 through 1979 in four generations. The Mark I was produced from 1961 through 1964. Mark II was produced from 1964 through 1966. Mark III was produced from 1966 to 1974. And the Mark IV was produced from 1974 through 1980. MG would celebrate their 50th anniversary in 1975, and to commemorate that momentous occasion, the anniversary cars would get a small plaque on the dashboard. There wasn't anything major to set the anniversary cars apart from the regular cars. The Mark IV sported a soft black polyurethane front bumper to comply with U.S. regulations. From the years 1961 through 1979, MG built just over 226,000 MG midgets. So, let's compare the Mark III on top and the Mark IV on the bottom, starting in the front. The biggest thing, or the first thing that stands out for me when looking at these two, is the polyurethane bumper on the Mark IV. It changes the whole front fascia of the car. The hood profile also slopes more than the Mark III. Turn signals are recessed inside the polyurethane bumper. Two windshield wipers on the Mark III, but the Mark IV has three windshield wipers. Moving to the side profile, both have side reflectors, both front and rear. Doors look different, but it might be the angle of this shot. The rear wheel wells are different. They are round on the Mark III versus more oval on the Mark IV, but they're both flared. Moving to the rear, at this angle, you can definitely see that the door gaps are a little bit different. The Mark IV has more of an angular gap going towards the vent window. Small, petite bumpers on the Mark III versus the big, U.S. government-mandated soft polyurethane bumpers on the Mark IV. Taillight lenses have been revised. The Mark III has an external rack, which I believe would be an option. Gas caps are in the same location, but redesigned. Jumping inside to take a quick look at the dash and interior situation. The gauges are very similar. The faces on a few gauges have been revised. The layout is a little bit different. Which one do you like better? Let's talk specs. 141 inches long, that's 11.75 feet, 55 and a half inches wide, 48.25 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 80 inches. It weighs 1,850 pounds. Price, $3,550, which is equivalent to you spending $20,350.94 in the year 2024. 
Total 1975 MG production was 27,946 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for this car, 1,493cc overhead valve in line 4, 1.5 liters. This engine was sourced from Triumph. It's also used in the Triumph Spitfire. It produces 56 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 67 pound-feet or 91 newton meters at 2,500 RPM with a bore of 2.9 inches and a stroke of 3.4 inches. Compression is 9 point one to one three main bearings when backed with a four speed manual transmission zero to 60 could be had in 15 seconds theoretical top speed of 91 miles an hour while achieving an average key word here is average doesn't mean the lowest doesn't mean the highest it means in between 25 to 30 perhaps more miles to the gallon it's got four wheels and reflexes so quick it almost seems alive it's perfectly balanced to perform and perform and perform. It's the wide open sports car, MG Midget. A moving experience. The lowest priced authentic sports car on the market. MG Midget, strong, honest, fun, young. MG Midget, from British Leyland. Story time. This car belongs to a friend of mine who I met at Hershey last year who watches the channel. I was filming the Franklin supercharged v12 and i heard somebody say hey that's jay from what it's like and i stopped filming to go see who said that and we became friends through through all of that this and and i'll tell you this story because i enjoy our friendship i think he's a cool dude and he's younger than me we got to get more young people in the car hobby but anyway this car is currently for sale at classic auto mall morgantown pennsylvania with over a thousand cars for sale when recording this episode anybody can go there and peruse their inventory online or in person for more information pictures pricing hours of operation be sure to click the link below after the show let's talk styling look at the stainless bezels around the headlights. Also, just notice how clean of a design this is. Very clean hood. It's like plastic, like a very thick plastic bumper with the turn signals down inside here. MG badge, nice and proud there in the center. turn signal indicators this one has wire wheels knockoff wire wheels this car is sitting on 13 inch wheels also look it has I don't know if you'd call this a mud flap or a gravel guard midget very smooth profile this car has this is where to put the jack uh, the jack up your car. This is the halfway point. And this would be to jack up the rear position. Or this this is the rear position to jack up the rear. Yes, this is this position is to jack up the rear tire. Notice the bright work. Notice this car has three windshield wipers. Also, just check out how small this windshield is. This, this is my hand for reference. Tiny vent windows. Side mirror mounted just at the back of the vent window. Look at this line right here. Just look at, and it goes the perimeter of the cabin. Antenna right here in the back. The rear fender does flare out in the back ever so slight, but then it's capped off. It goes back down into another mud flat reflector.
MG badge there on the trunk. Brake lights and or turn signal. Lights all in that one light. Gas filler right there. Backup lights. While we're back here, we might as well get in the trunk. It's a pretty big trunk, all things considered. Full size spare right there. This door is pretty light. It's pretty small as well. This is the door handle to get out. Door handle to get out. The lock mechanism is right behind it, which I think is really interesting. This did have armrest. Its owner decided to delete those. Door handle to pull the door shut. Window crank for the window. Operates like this. Notice it doesn't have a frame around it. Vent windows. And they're tiny, tiny vent windows. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. Look how small those pedals are. Clutch, brake, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood would look like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Defrost, fan, tachometer, oil pressure, coolant temperature, which share the same gauge, which is super interesting. Brake pressure switch, gasoline gauge, speedometer, tripometer at the top, odometer at the bottom, trip reset, choke, headlights, windshield washer feature, which you push the stick in, and then there's two speed windshield wipers on the same stock, four-way hazard lights, radio, lighter, standard H shift pattern with lift for reverse, which is super nice because you can't accidentally go into reverse. Some cars don't have reverse lockout, which always puzzled me, ashtray. Up above, there are no sun visors. Uh, there is a rear view mirror with daytime nighttime feature, another no sun visor over there, but there is a place to put sun visors. Uh, they just clip into here. Coming to the under the hood section, the hood release is inside the car. Right here. There is a secondary catch right here. And you just fish it up out from this hole. Here it is. The owner was telling me that this is a Triumph engine. It's got an alternator right here, radiator, very small, oil filter right here. You don't even have to get underneath this car to change the oil. Steering rack coming down through here, coil, master brake cylinder. heater box, but it's all just crammed in here. The owner was telling me that he has hooker headers on this. Also, just look at how small that belt is. On the positive side, affordable, great fuel economy. Some say it's the cheapest way to go from A to B topless, full instrumentation, cockpit-like dash against it. Very cramped cockpit. And I have no idea how Belize drove this. We are about the same size. It's said to be noisy at speed. All right. Now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1975 Volkswagen Beetle convertible or 1975 MG Midget or 1975 Fiat Spider 124? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. 
if you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1975 MG BGT or 1975 MG Midget or 1975 MGB. Once again, you got to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section. We'll have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or shoot me an email. It'll be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love reading the stories personally. And until next time... Toodaloo! Was it back? No, it was up for the win. Wait, is this turn so? Yeah, Wash was in, and then um, up is one, and then that's your speeds. It's been a while since I've driven this thing, so turn signal, high beam. All right, so yeah, Lights, turn signals so and high beams are on this one, and this one this does your, your windshield wiper. So you push it into Wash which would spray the windshield with the fluid. Right. And then this, you would, um, just one wipe is, would that be that? It would just go at a certain low, slow speed. That's quick speed. And these things do fly like a bandit. <laughs> light switch. So half midway is parking lights, and then full way is your standard light. Um, this is your he bright lights, which would be backwards on that. That's your bright lights to let you know that they're on. Right. Um, your hazard, your four ways are right here. Um, this is a uh, brake light for um, the parking brake. This is uh, your safety belt light, cigarette lighter. Radio, this is your on off, this is the volume. Uh, treble and bass is over here, I think. I can't read it from here. Nice. Um, reverse, you actually have to lift up on the gear stick and put and, it over. Oh, okay, just like a car um, gear. Yeah, it's, it's a... Like a long you said this was fan. That's the f the fan for the heater. So this is defrost. Blow. That's the defroster. Yeah. When you turn the defroster on, it automatically turns on the fan for the defroster. But when you turn that fan on, it would turn a fan on under here to blow at your feet. Okay. And then there were also vents down in there that you can open up that would allow the engine heat to heat your feet too, which is would also allow your any leaking exhaust to come into the car too.